Welcome to this week's Fireside Chat with Jesse. I am joined today by Dave Normandin, President and CEO of Wintrust Specialty Finance. Thanks for joining me, Dave. Thanks for having me, Jesse. It's great to be here with you. No, uh, absolutely, man. I think I've been uh, trying to target to have you on this show probably since inception, but I know calendars can be kind of crazy, especially for you and what Wintrust is doing. So appreciate you taking some time today. Of course. So for people who might not be familiar with yourself, do you mind just kind of um, giving your career to date in equipment finance, Dave? Sure. Uh, like most people, I, I didn't seek uh, equipment finance. It sort of found me, if you will. Uh, you know, I was a struggling kid in, in San Diego State, uh, crushing four years of college into six years while living in uh, PV part of the time and had no idea what I wanted to do, truthfully. And uh, I, I, I would show up to the career center with a suit in the car and I uh, sign up on the little information board hanging on the wall and, and uh, in the interview. And I interviewed over 40 companies uh, just trying to figure out what was the right spot. I was pretty entrepreneurial and ran a couple uh, companies through college uh, that I'd started up and I, I knew I wanted to do something and build something, but I didn't know what it was. And um, I, that's how I found the industry. I, I was recruited by Ignacio Sanchez at the time uh, with, yeah, with Balboa Capital and started there in the mid 90s. And uh, I was with Balboa for about 11 years. And, um, you know, Pat and Sean gave me a great opportunity and uh, kind of grew that to the point where I, I left in 2006 and started uh, my own leasing company, which was pretty typical for people in Southern California at that time. And so, yeah, exactly. Stop it. Stop and, it. <laughs> and so, exactly. And so, uh, Brett and Jeff still run Envision Capital today. It's a company I founded back in, 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 in 06. And, uh, and amazing timing, you know, we didn't know what we didn't know. Uh, and it didn't hurt us until it did, right? So, right. 2008 came around and it got a little tough. And uh, by 2011, I was ready to do something different. Uh, the guys carried on with the business, and I basically built a business plan targeting banks to re-enter the leasing space because many had exited. And as uh, a guy who wanted to be a, a lessor, but really was a broker at the time, given the the, the, the market, um, you know, there weren't very many uh, bank-focused leasing companies really actively pursuing that that market. So um, I built a business plan, did some consulting with some folks, and ended up. Uh, with my first bank, never been in the bank before at um, Pack Trust Bank in 2012. And uh, that was an interesting experience, a learning experience. We grew this little bank from 700 million in assets to about 12 and a half billion in assets in about four years. So it was a lot of uh, acquisitions, a lot of uh, chaos, but I learned a lot during that time. And uh, as the bank grew up, it changed its name to Bank of California which many folks listening to this may recall that, that time frame. Okay. Um, and when they did that, they, they changed their mission and wanted to become California's bank. And as a national leasing company, that wasn't a great fit. And so, <laughs> you know, fair. literally reinvented myself and, uh, and uh, packaged up the business, the people, the systems, literally the physical location. And one day we were Bank of California, the next day, the entire business, everyone showed up just as they did the day before and we were Homni Bank. And, uh, and that's what happened. That's how we ended up with the leasing business in Homni Bank and grew that for uh, a year and a half or so before I recognized that, um, you know, I wanted something different than what they were looking for. And uh, the scale I wanted was probably too much for, for the scale of that bank, which was fine. And so uh, Kirk Phillips and I, um, you know, would, would meet at DLFA events. This is what happens, right? Associations bring people together and create new opportunities for them. And, and my, uh, my life story has been a benefit, beneficiary of that. And so uh, I joined Wintrust in, it was September of 2019. And um, so 19, actually it was 18, 2018. This, the world is flying by me, uh, apparently. And uh, so... And, you know, basically what Wintrust is, is sort of this interesting thing, right? There's a lot of different leasing companies. We'll talk about that more in a minute here. But um, I started a, a small ticket vendor flow business uh, and got there in September, launched a uh, business in January, and I have been there ever since. Well, that's fantastic. And I've, I, I think I probably met you probably way back in the day. 
um, when you were probably still at Balboa or Envision, actually. But, yeah. um, you know, I, one thing I can add is as you've moved from Bank of California to Hanmi to Windrust, um, the, your, your main people have come with you. So that's a testament to who you are, Dave, as a leader in this industry. So um, congratulations well, on thank that. Thank you. Man. Yeah, we are fortunate. I, I'm, I'm grateful. I have a great team of folks that we've done uh, life together for 10 years now. Um, uh, Chris Modlin, who was my first hire uh, in a bank. And get, get this right, I'm an, I'm an independent guy in a bank for my first time. I go out and, and hire a guy who's never been in a bank either, and we proceed to build a, a business that uh, three years in, at the end of this last year, uh, from a standstill start, we're at half a billion dollars in assets with a couple guys who just happen to work hard and hire some good people and, and, and keep going at it for the last decade. And Chris and I will be together uh, 10 years uh, this June, ironically enough, and uh, wow. which has been just uh, an amazing thing for both of us. Um, and a lot of the team has been together a long time, which has been fun. Yeah, and um, that was going to be another question I have. Going from kind of a broker or independent to like a bank, on, curse, on a high-low perspective, you're just like, oh my God, I can get better rates, better access to funds, better all this stuff. And then you're like, this is the red tape and all that other stuff. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> There's a trade-off, right? There, there's, there's a cost to the capital structure. I, I'm a business guy. I'm not a banker, right? And people have met me once pretty much know that about me. I, I'm pretty transparent. And uh, so for me, it's, it's like, okay, so I used to spend a lot of time trying to find banks and funding sources and sources of capital to fund deals. And, and now I spend time uh, setting up companies and building organizations that manage the foundational pieces of being a bank, which is a lot of compliance, a lot of audit, a lot of regulation that is just hand in hand part of this deal. But the capital structure, in my opinion, doesn't get better. And if you can do that in the right organization, um, you know, it's amazing. And I, I will say that that's been the re that's been sort of the thing that's been amazing about um, about Wintrust is it's a different type of feel and structure where there's still very entrepreneurial folks that have happened to have a half a billion uh, fifty billion dollar bank and um, you know we've got about two and a half billion dollars in the space and it's fun right they get it and uh, that's something different than um, many banks that that I've been a part of and many folks I know that run bank programs the banks the, the parent never really understands oftentimes that can make it tough no no absolutely and then like and even so the people that have come with you throughout your journey and then the people that you guys have brought on you know in the last i want to say six to 12 months um you know is also a testament to that growth and um, entrepreneurship that you guys are like in front of you right now it's awesome yeah thank you i appreciate that i mean listen we're having fun Right. I mean, at the end of the day, this is what's crazy about it. We're working really hard, but we're having a good time with it. And um, in some ways, we look back and go, well, geez, how do we get to half a billion dollar balance sheet in three years without really anything to, to kick us off? Right. And and, uh, you know, just this last month, um, Eric McGriff, uh, who is our chief risk officer and, and Doug Nielsen, who's our chief sales officer and Chris Mullen, our chief operating officer. You know, we spent uh, a few days together doing high level strategy stuff, not, not the normal annual strategy stuff, but stuff that says like, okay, so we're at a half a billion dollars. So what, right? Like, how do we get to a billion dollar balance sheet? And what's that going to look like? And can we do it in the next three years? Right. And so we're having those discussions and we're ripping apart our processes and rebuilding and doing some really fun stuff that it's amazing how uh, apparently geeky guys like me, we get switched on by this stuff. We enjoy it. And uh, so the team's having fun uh, building this thing at Wintrust. That's great. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm bouncing around a little bit here. Um, but from a culture perspective and bringing these people on board uh, when you really couldn't be in front of people like working remote, like, how's that, Dave? Yeah, no, that was interesting. I mean, we literally doubled the size of our team through the pandemic. Actually, in, in 2020, we doubled the size of our team. And so um, that was interesting. And, and in fact, um, Chris and I were talking about a few weeks ago, we talk about the culture of the organization. Everybody wants to talk about the culture of the organization, that it's amazing and this, this, that, and this, right. that. Right? Everyone thinks it's their secret sauce, right? And apparently we all are in the same boat or something. But I will tell you, it's funny, Chris and I were talking like, you know, we're talking about that. We do thir what we call Thursday Thursdays in our office. And so our main office is in uh, Irvine and the folks there every Thursday, we break it like 3.30. 
and we make cocktails and we have a have a beer and we sit around and we'll invite customers in for local folks and we'll hang out we'll kind of do life we'll catch up with each other and it's it's a great way to build community but chris and i recognize that over half our employees have never done a thirsty thursday they don't understand what the culture even is like because we've been doing this remote right and it's and it's not that you you don't try to maintain that same culture but it's different it just is always different no, that's uh, that's interesting. So, are you guys like um, the people that want to be in the office are there, and then you have people who want to zoom in for Thirsty Thursdays? Is that is that allowed? Yeah. So that's a good good question. I mean, what what happened is as we look at at, at building uh, Wintrust back in what is that eighteen? We started building the model. We we initially built the business cloud based and, and paperless because we knew talent is the currency, right? And getting the right talent matters more than anything else. So we set the business up to have people work from anywhere. And so more than half of our staff does work remotely around the country, wherever they happen to be. And we try to get the folks together when we can. Um, so we have, we have a lot of the operations team in Irvine, and then we've got people all over the place. And so sometimes they'll remote in, uh, but most of the time they feel left out, right? Because we're making good cocktails and well, they're in their bedroom only, or something. I don't it's know. It's only so much. I mean, I guess the only advantage you'd have if you're on the East Coast is you already started maybe two hours ago. So by that time, it's it's okay. <laughs> yeah, three, but who's counting, right? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And like I said, I apologize for skipping around here. So let's talk Wintrust, if you don't mind. We might just introduce sure. the organization. I know we went to culture first. I just thought that was important based on the, the flow yeah. of the conversation. Sorry. No, Wintrust is a really interesting organization. It started by a, a guy 30 years ago in Chicago, um, basically trying to build relationships with folks in the community. And so that's what Wintrust Financial has become. It's a holding company that, that runs 15 different bank charters. Um, it's about around $50 billion in assets, but about a third of that is in what they call the specialty markets, of which the leasing business is in the specialty markets. So today, um, you'll see uh, in, in the market, Wintrust Asset Finance, which is essentially the holding company that holds the four separate leasing companies that make up Wintrust. So you've got uh, Kirk Phillips, great friend, and runs a Wintrust Commercial Finance based out of uh, Dallas, Texas. And then you've got Dick Dunbar, who runs Wintrust Equipment Finance out of Indiana. And uh, Jeff Walensky, who runs Wintrust Capital uh, out of Chicago. And then I run Wintrust Specialty Finance. And our business specifically is focused on, on vendor programs, really programmatic flow business, where Kirk's business is really larger ticket, $5 million plus transaction sizes uniquely built. Uh, equipment Finance is really a, uh, an investment grade discount buy desk. And Capital is really um, funding companies that are within the footprint that are bank customers or their target customers for the bank within footprint. So that's what makes up uh, one trust. And so it, it's confusing to the market, we get it. And I, I guess the point I'll make is that uh, whoever you call, hopefully you'll get to the right place, right? Because people often call me and I'll say, well, that's really a fit for, for you know, Phillips over there at commercial and, and we'll refer a deal across over there or relationship across and vice versa. So we're, we're all very friendly and we work together to build really an overall business that's now about two and a half billion dollars in assets. Well, and thank you for clarifying um, just for people watching this. I just found that out five minutes before this whole recording started. <laughs> so I had asked the question. <laughs> um, well, thank you for that overview um, there, Dave. So one thing I want to get into next is kind of like the equipment finance industry, um, you know, obviously starting in from Balboa, I would like to figure out how many organizations actually came from Pat's company there um, throughout the years, uh, probably too many to count. But Well, they um, actually came from Amplicon. Amplicon in Southern California, believe it or not, oh. which is, I think, CalPERS now, um, was the genesis of Balbo and Republic and all these companies that came out in the early 90s. And uh, I would imagine there's got to be hundreds of companies that have actually formed from folks that, that trace their, their path back uh, through Amplicon originally. That's where um, Pat and Sean were before they started Balboa. I learned something, another thing today. I did not, I've never heard that name before, but thank you for that. <laughs> yep. One of the companies- Apparently that means I'm getting mind. old. Jesse, that means I'm no. really old, apparently. 
no, I, I guess I'm not asking enough questions to enough people. So I'm sorry, <laughs> you're not getting old. <laughs> but I know um, another Aztec alumni is Dennis Odeon from Regents. Yep. So another guy who left Balboa to start that organization. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he and Don Hansen. Don Hansen and I worked together for, geez, 11 years at, at Balboa, to put it in context. Uh, there's a number of us who have branched out and done many other things. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it was a good experience for me and one that I appreciate, uh, you know, 11 years of investment. I may, have, may probably have left a year or two before I did. But, you know, the, in the grand scheme of things, I learned a lot. And, you know, that really helped me prepare myself to, to start Envision, which, of course, uh, allowed me the opportunity to build a business plan with the confidence after starting your own business to do it again. Um, and, and now I'm kind of serial. I think this is like 4.0 4 for me or something. But uh, I enjoy that aspect. I enjoy the building uh, of the business side of it. And, uh, and it's been a good thing. Well, and that's one of the things where the people who watch this, it's like getting an understanding of the industry and like why people in it are so passionate, um, you know, about it. Because it's like, you don't really go to school for this industry. You almost like fall into it. Um, but once you're in it, you really don't get out. Well, and, and I think that those who, who go on to do, you know, bigger things in the business are, are ones that continue to invest in it. it. It is a career, right? It's a profession. And to be good at it, there's a lot of disciplines to understand. Um, you know, and if you look at our business, uh, we're, we're always trying to find ways to educate our folks. We're yeah, heavily involved in, uh, in the foundation, the CLFP Foundation, heavily involved in the industry itself and in the LFA and NEFA and uh, the foundation there. And so, you know, it's, it's constantly investing in yourself, right? And a lot of those folks that came from places like Balboa, that have gone on to do something have really invested in themselves to do what they've become able to do. And, and so, and, and I think you find that throughout this industry. And that's why when, when things get hard, um, I think this industry generally flourishes. And I do things will, think things will get harder. And I actually think that's a good thing for, for guys like us. So um, I, I'm excited about the future and the business. And and frankly, as you mentioned, it's the people that you get to do it with that become lifelong friends and folks that are more than just people that you compete against. Most of the time, you really think about them as people that you work with. Um, and, it's, and it's a really great community of solid people. Yeah, it's amazing. You can sit down across the table with direct competitors that you maybe just lost a deal to or you're fighting a deal on now and you sit there and just have a conversation and share best practices. It's kind of, it's typically not, commonplace i would say when it comes to business <laughs> yeah half the time we buy them drinks right i mean it's, it's <laughs> yeah. one of those things it's just it's part of the culture that makes this industry great right and and i think that that's that's important to hold on to um and and i think there's a lot of us who, who spend a lot of time yourself included investing a lot of yourself into an industry to make it better to make it something that you want it to be rather than just you know be a part of something and tag along. And uh, I personally appreciate the efforts that you make and the efforts that many people make in this industry to make it better. Uh, I'm doing my part to, to try to do the same. No, absolutely. And you hit on something really key there and that was the trade associations and kind of what they have meant to your career so far. I know you and I, have, I think, sat on the board of NIFA right as it was yep. formed for, for, for a couple of years. And I know you're extremely active with the ELFA as well. Um, so, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a valid point. But it's like you, what you put into those will, will come back. Oh, I, I think you always get more out than you put in. I think that's the crazy okay. thing about it. And, um, and for those of us who actually enjoy it, which I really do, I appreciate and enjoy the opportunity to serve and to contribute. Um, these are great avenues to be able to do that, find places to, to be, be able to reinvest and to help the next generation coming up, which it's incredible to see the efforts that associations have made to draw in younger folks and the number of younger folks and really a fairly small um, period of time over the last four or five years, the influx of a lot of younger folks into the business and material waste has been really great to see. No, and that's always been one of those concerns where it's like, how do you get that next level of talent that's coming in? And I think that's been a conversation for my I don't even know, 17 years that I've been in this space. <laughs> right, 
<laughs> right. And you know what? I, you know, it's so interesting too. It used to be, I, I well, a couple of things that I've noticed over the years, you know, one, I used to go to, to associations and conferences and I was always the young guy in the room. Um, I still think I'm the young guy in the room, but I'm clearly not. <laughs> I'm just, just deceiving myself. And two, hey, you, have a, you have a nice head of not really no gray. There's no gray. I'm <laughs> extremely envious. Don't let that fool you. <laughs> Don't let that fool you, Jesse. <laughs> Um, and the other thing is is the diversity that's really become highlighted in our business and our space has been great, and it, it goes to um, you know the opportunity that the industry is creating for folks, and that those folks are walking into and earning real strong positions of leadership by doing great things, and so it's been amazing to see that accelerate, and in some ways accelerated through a time where we didn't get together. Think about that. Last two years where we really didn't get together a lot, um, we've seen more d &I work be done in our industry than any time I can remember. And that's a pretty incredible thing. Yeah, I know. And you have to owe a lot of that to the ELFA. You know, Monder does a great job at highlighting that as well. Um, yep. You know, and industry leaders like yourself, we're, you know, we're intentional with our, you know, with our hiring practices, which is great. Sure. But um, so I ask everyone that comes on here, Dave, to give a little fun fact about themselves. Um, right. Not in the fact that not in the fact that you're from Southern California, but now live in Florida, which fantastic destinations, always warm, both sides. Yep. But a um, little fun fact about yourself, if you don't mind sharing with people. Sure. Um, I, I, I'm passionate about the water. I love the water. And so uh in the west on the west coast i i sail competitively uh offshore sailboat racing so okay. uh you know so like eight hundred thousand mile races uh you know from southern california to cabo or to puerto Vallarta. um this next year i'm, I'm like solo or with like a team no with the crew yeah with, with the, crew? With the okay. crews yeah so it's it's fun i love to be uh, i love multi-day overnight races uh, so I do a lot of uh, a lot do a lot of sailboat racing, and uh, and I also do a lot of scuba diving. Uh, I, I love to be in the water. In fact, even this morning I was in the water for a, a quick hour dive um, before I got my day started, and it's it's a fantastic uh, thing for me that I enjoy that not a lot of people know about me, but that um, that if you talk to me, you'll see me switch on when we start talking about the water. That's fair. What's the best destination? I guess the best dive you've ever had. Oh, that's a hard one. Um, I've dove a lot of places. Uh, I probably, probably um, Bora Bora Lagoon with the big manta rays. Um, they're not quite as big as the manas in, in, in uh, Kona, which I've dove with, but, um, but they're, it's magical and the water is just unbelievable. It, it's one of those things where you you take an hour and you exit your world and you enter an alternative universe that you get to exist in. And when you see things with, you know, 12 foot wingspans, you know, swimming by you and brushing against you, it, it's pretty, pretty special. It's pretty neat. It seemed a little nerve wracking at first, but then once you kind of go through it a few times, you're like, okay, this isn't bad. <laughs> well, the manas aren't the problems. I also do shark dives. I, I, I like to go to see big stuff in the water. So there's a big dive we do off the far end of Molokai. Uh, you cross the Molokai Channel from Maui okay. and you dive in a really remote location. And we pretty much do it to see a colony of hammerheads over there. And it's really, okay. really cool. Um, but a lot of people will not go with me, including my wife, who dives with me just about everywhere in the world, but she has no desire to go shark diving. No, I mean, I've, I've been in a, in a cage before, um, but never like actually on a dive. I have to try that out sometime. <laughs> you you got to do it. It's, it's fantastic, Jesse. <laughs> Reset your mind um, makes the world good. All of a sudden, it's like, God, you know, that yesterday wasn't so bad. Just get me through this right. last five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, so I guess just in closing here, of all the different finance organizations to do business with, Dave, why Wintrust? Uh, I think there's a couple of reasons. You know, one, there's a lot of capital in the market. There's a lot of places that can compete on price. I mean, we can do that too. But I think what's different about Wintrust is we really care about custom tailoring a unique solution to you that is more competitive than what you'll find in the market. We spend the time, the energy, 
we have the knowledge and skill to really provide something different and unique that adds more value than just the rate itself. And that's our value proposition. We do, we build programs that are administratively really challenging at scales that most of our competition won't. They give folks an opportunity to give more to their customers. And so that's, that's really what we do in the market and, and why you should call us. Oh, and, and I guess we're kind of seeing that now with all the record growth. So you guys are definitely uh, found the definite formula for success. So I am excited to see where things go from here. So <laughs> thank you. So am I. <laughs> all right, Dave. Well, I really appreciate your time today, sir. And look forward to seeing you at the upcoming funding conference. Absolutely. We'll see you next week. Have a good day. Take care.